he became known for his photos of Jackie Kennedy, photos she never wanted taken. Well, Fellini uh, coined this word, paparazzi, which, and he said they were bandits of images. How did you know this was going to be what you did for a living? The Korean War was on, and rather than being drafted, I enlisted in the U.S. Air Force because you can learn a career. And the closest thing to art was photography. I was never a photographer before. I had the only camera that worked in the Air Force, so I got all the assignments. I was interested in the glamour world of celebrity. And the reason is, it's curiosity, one word. We want to know what these celebrities look like in real life. We see them on the screen as superstars, glamorous, but are they as glamorous in person? I shoot them doing things so they're themselves, being themselves. And, and realism, that's what I like. And to capture their expressions, uh, relating to each other. Not looking at my camera, I don't like pose stuff. That's why uh, Jackie was my ideal subject, because she didn't look into my camera, she didn't stop and pose. That's what I want. But I mean, come on, one of your most famous pictures is her running away from you. Jackie Winblow, oh, I call it my Mona Lisa, where Jackie came out of a building and I followed her to the corner and I hopped a cab to hide. I took two shots from the rear window of the taxi and here's where luck played a part. The driver, I didn't tell him, he blew his horn. He was interested in Jackie too. And Jackie turned, and that's how I got that picture. She did take you to court to keep you away, though. Now, the reason she took me to court, first thing, was because I took pictures of John Jr. That was the main reason. She, she didn't mind pictures of herself. She wanted her children to be normal without publicity. I faced seven years in jail, a $120,000 fine. So I... Um, I surrendered all rights to the three of them, Jackie and the children, for the rest of their lives. In the last 13 years of Jackie's life, I never photographed her. The only time she spoke to me was when she came out of the 21 Club one evening after dinner with Ari Onassis. She grabbed my wrist and with her elbow pinned me against her limousine and said in a whispery voice, you've been hunting me for three months now. And she was not angry. I think that statement showed that she loved me pursuing her, that she loved being pursued. I think she was a great actress. This is the this, where... this is, this, <laughs> this, is Mama this, Brando. <laughs> this is the night that almost cost yes, you yes, your, yes, your, your yes, face, yes, right? Yes, yes. I followed uh, Dick Cavett and Marlon Brando from his studio uh, to Chinatown where they're gonna have dinner. And I shot about nine or 10 shots. And then Brando stopped and he called me over. What else do you want that you already have? And I looked at Cavett, because uh, they had sunglasses at nighttime. And I said, how about a shot with, about uh, the sunglasses? So looking at Cavett. All of a sudden, Brando answered with a sock to my lower jaw, knocked five teeth out of my lower jaw. He just so punched you? Just punched me with the right hand. Well, he's a weirdo, you know. <laughs> 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 it's an asset for me to be sort of known, some fame. The, the fame I got was from the two trials with Jackie and the Brando incident. These incidents made me famous. And it's an asset because I want the stars to see me after they shoot fast and they'll react to me. There are all these pictures of you being photographed while you're taking a picture. A lot of photographers don't like to be in pictures, but not you. I love being photographed. I'm somebody. You know, in my tagging class, there was a Mrs. Costanza when I was in high school. She said, you're either somebody or nobody. And at that instant, I said, I'm going to be a somebody. I'm an opportunist. That's it. Even in the Air Force. In the Air Force, I bought a Rolleiflex from a master sergeant, a Rolleiflex for $150. I started shooting glamorous girls on the beaches and all that. But I also bought from the same master sergeant a whole set of encyclopedia for $30. And in this encyclopedia was a great photographer, Henry Carpenter, Bazan, uh, Eugene Smith, great photographers 
that I, I know someday I was going to be like them. I, I had a passion to be somebody like that. And have you achieved that? Are you a great photographer? When you love your work, you, you do good. I never expected to go this far. Coming up, just how far he went. It is the modern art of today. Photography, not painting, not sculpture. Photography is the art of today because it captures people, the realism, the expressions, as I said, the decisive moment that you get the beauty on people's faces. A camera could freeze an instant of time and space and, and that's it. You could capture the instant expression that you want. I mean, you're, you've been relentless in pursuing these people. Did you ever think for a minute, I should ask first before I take the picture? I don't ask permission because by asking permission, you would lose the spontaneity, the surprise expressions, the off guard expressions. The stars in Hollywood are, are selling their face, their, their physical makeup that they're, that they're born with. And their heart and their minds contribute to their essence, their individuality. And that's what we try to capture on film. We want to see these people in real life as human beings, not as we see them on the screen where they're superstars, glamorous in character. We want to see what they're like. I'm not shy, I'm aggressive in a way. <laughs> I want to get those pictures. I have a passion for this medium of photography. But today the paparazzi, they do it for money. And I don't think they're educated, most of them, in LA especially. They, they just do it for money and they hope they get lucky shots. What do you think of the pictures they take today? There's a big difference of the paparazzi today when I was shooting. There was very few paparazzi around. Today, uh, the photographers and the markets rely on vulgarity, the pornography, in fact, some of it. They show things that I would never do, never did. For instance, they show celebrities fat and ugly and uh, shed a light on their thighs and all this negative stuff. There's a market for it, but I don't like it. I think it's vulgar and we shouldn't do that. I, I, think, I think it's a bad taste. And we're selling, a photographer is selling his taste, and I don't like that. It's embarrassing. Natural beauty, realism. Yeah. Captures stars as themselves. And the way you capture that is them doing things. It's very difficult for the studio photographer to get this, because most of them are trying to be what they're not. You know, they're not being themselves. It's hard to be yourself in front of a camera for celebrities but when i shoot i have it easy because they're themselves they're talking to each other of all the people you've photographed who was the most difficult to get the worst celebrity that i got was uh richard burton in guanavaca mexico where they did a film called hammersmith is out and uh, Rich, uh, richard burton both of them were in the film richard burton liz taylor i was shooting them for a week around locations. And then one night at the uh, hotel, the Posada Jacarandas was the name of the hotel. The uh, manager says, it's where so do you great. want, the, the manager wants to hide, he says, where do you want to hide tonight to get the pictures? Because they're doing a pool scene, a party scene. And I picked a, a grotto, a cave, uh, where the pump of the pool was, where I, muffle the Nikon shutter and I start shooting at five o'clock and all that but then the crew member came up come in the cave to turn off the pump because of the sound for the film and he discovered me and what they did to me was unbelievable they took all the film from me and destroyed it they went to my hotel took the 15 rolls that I shot for the whole week took it to the set pulled it out of the car and destroyed it all and, and sent three agent, three uh, crew members, Burton did this, and they beat me up, broke a, bro a tooth, a bloody nose, and, and they could have killed me. But the, the, the good part of the end of the story is that when he divorced Liz, he married Sally Hay, his new wife. And when he came to New York, his chauffeur called me, he says, Burton wants to hire you for wedding pictures. 
So he gave me wedding pictures. Me and my wife shot wedding pictures. So he felt guilty. That's the reason what happened in Guanabaca. The Miami Herald paper yes. coined that word for me. What did they call they, it? They, they, my, uh, paparazzo superstar. They said. And you love that. I love that. Great. Steve McQueen. I photographed him and I put him next to this uh, at the uh, studio. There was a sign, closed set. And this is one of my great shots. This sold many times in my galleries. It's an iconic shot. You know about the Jackie case and all that. These people all knew you. Yeah, oh, they know me, yes. And it, it, it's great when they know you, you have an edge. Because a lot of stars, the person taking their picture, they have no idea who it is. I don't look through the viewfinder. Because looking through the viewfinder, the stars look at a camera. And a camera, to me, is not a person. So I shoot pre focus with a wide angle. You only could do this with a wide angle. You can't do this with a long lens because you, you know, uh, get focused. You know. With a wide angle, you get focused five feet away, six feet. And you look at the star and shoot fast. That way, you get person to person. You get the human response, person to person. And that's what a portrait is. A portrait is a meeting of two people, person to person, eye to eye. And that's my theory of shooting. So uh, when you're shooting, you're holding the camera. Yes. Sort of like here. Yeah, right. And, and looking, looking, right. Right. Not looking through yes. the camera like that. Now sometimes my uh, cropping is a little crooked, but I fix it up in a dark room. This is all the Jackie file here. Jackie. Now this, this is your basement, by the way. Yeah. I mean, this, this is, is not a typical basement. No. These, <laughs> these are all Kodak boxes where I store in each box eight by 10 black and white pictures. And how many are down here? Oh. <laughs> We figure um, uh, maybe seven million, but we don't know uh, the count. Really. Seven million Seven prints? million, yes. This is the uh, Liz Taylor file. Next to Jackie Onassis. I got more of her. You've got more Liz more Taylor, Liz than, Taylor Jackie. than Jackie. Because Jackie didn't go out as much. You have to love yourself and uh, love your talent, whatever you do. And that's it. The knowledge is love. The more you know, the more you love. And that's the key to, I think, to passion. And uh, I, I, I'm lucky to, to discover that and did it.